As a quick intro, my name's James Vaughan. I run the uh, data products and analytics team at CoreLogic, uh, the largest property data company in the world and Australia as well. Um, our purpose is to help people build better lives and the way that we do that is by pairing the real estate professionals that serve homeowners right across Australia and New Zealand. And uh, um, for example, helping agents win listings and sell properties faster, insurers make sure properties are safe. But uh, today we've got um, some of those professionals that are changing the way that uh, helping homeowners access the credit products and the services that they need to make that biggest decision in their lives. And um, we've got a great panel today of uh, industry heavy hitters at different points of um, their business journeys and um, uh, different value propositions in the lending process as well. So super excited to get into these topics and get some views of these guys that we are really fortunate to work with on a range of different ways of how mortgages are getting digitized and disrupted in, in this part of the world. So. On that, I'll hand over to the guys to give a bit of a background on who they are, what they do, and kind of the purpose of their organisation before we, we, we get into it. And as an aside, we've got two Anguses on the panel. So uh, <laughs> we've got uh, Gus G and Gus B, as we're going to colloquial call them throughout the, the session. And um, maybe with Gus G, we'll start with you and, and hear a bit about what you're up to. Yeah, terrific. Thanks, James. So uh, Gus G here, everyone. So yeah, pleasure to be here this afternoon. Uh, so I'm the CEO and co-founder of Finspo. Uh, Finspo is a, a digital broker. So we um, been around for a couple of years now. So a bit over two years ago, I left a role similar to Gus B here at, at NAB, and I spent many years in executive roles at, at NAB and ANZ before that. But but Finspo, we're we're yeah building a, a digital self-driving proposition for for customers. We're we uh, founded with three of us, yeah, December 2019, and we're up to about 30 staff uh, right now. Had significant growth in terms of the team, um, but then also just in terms of the business dynamics. So we've got a, a loan book, which is growing nicely. We're sort of over 600 million now, um, getting some really nice ori monthly originations coming through as well. And, and that's really built off a, a proposition that is fiercely pro-consumer. So obviously being a broker, we, we very much believe in the tenant of choice and being able to offer a range of providers to our customers. And, and I know if you've been to a lot of the sessions over, over the, this conference, you would have seen a lot of innovation around particularly the, if you like, the application stage of the home loans process and, and a lot of lenders getting down to, um, you know, 10 minute home loans, one minute home loans, two minute home loans. And that's super important and, and it's something that we are turning our attention to now in terms of that self-driving brokerage experience. But, but what we've been doing over the last couple of years is really doubling down on the, probably the, the barbell ends of the proposition. So the element of building awareness around um, how much you can borrow, how much you can save, um, what's the best product for you. So that early pre-application stage of the journey, we've built some really interactive forms that help you do that and some really great customer tools around such as rate my rate and how do I know if I'm on a good product. And then probably our biggest differentiator is at the, the other end of the experience. So we've got a, a proprietary app that uh, helps you, once you've got a home loan, you then connect all your accounts and it basically makes sure everything's on track for your home loan and has something important happened, has your, has your rate changed, um, what can you do to pay down your home loan faster, um, is anything happening with the rest of your banking? So we've integrated insights across your, your credit card, your transaction account and your home loan. So really, how can you save on fees? How can you manage your accounts better? And how can you pay less on your home loan? So yeah, pretty um, exciting time for the business. And, and uh, we're sort of exiting that. I guess we're still early compared to a number of uh, fintechs you would have seen. But moving to that next stage of really accelerating growth, which is, which is great. Great. Thanks very much, Gus. Um, Derek? Hello everyone and thanks James for having me here today. Um, so Derek Sheeran is my name, CEO of 1-2 Home Loans. We're super early in comparison to Gus. Um, we are just launching into market now. We're a challenger home loan lender. Our mission is to create brand new products and services that people haven't seen before that really help them buy, own and sell homes. So we care about the property itself, not just the loan in itself. 
We're just launching right now with our um, market first product, which is a rate reducing home loan. So every 5% the customer pays down, they automatically earn a rate discount and the harder they work for their loan, the faster they earn those discounts and the more money they can save over the life of that loan. So it's a gamified product that rewards customers' loyalty. And um, the way we've come about our journey is that we have built our own platform from the ground up, um, full stack, so everything in a core banking world that you would think about. We've done the whole lot ourselves in one single system deep into the cloud, which is allowing us to build products like this for customers. And we'll talk a bit more about property data and experience. But um, one of the things we're doing differently on experience is um, we've created what we think might be a world first which is an immersive video experience where people can join a virtual room with us and they can have a two-way conversation with their agents and see graphics, upload their bank state or upload their documents and actually digitally connect their bank accounts and see their statements, position and all that kind of good jazz. So it's a really beautiful um, digital immersive uh, virtual room for customers to discover what's right for them and to figure out when somebody there by their side what they should be thinking about. So that's a bit about us and we're launching now and um, hoping to scale next year and starting off with a digital broking relationship with Lendy, which we're kicking off early next year. Great, thanks very much, Derek. And last but not least, Gus. <laughs> yes, uh, Gus Blandy, or oh, Angus Blandy, uh, for those, um, I'm, I'm the B. Uh, this might be a world first, having you know two Gus's <laughs> on the stage. Um, yeah, so I work at NAB, uh, I look after home buying, um, and you know, and, and you know, I've had a long career at NAB and was fortunate enough to work with uh, Gus G for for quite a while. Um, you know, we're really sort of excited about. I mean, we're, we're obviously at the other stage of the um, uh, of, of of the journey where you know we're sort of now trying to rethink uh, how we approach the market, given you know significant um, sort of competition and uh, you know real innovation sort of moving into the sector. And um, so that that's been a that's been a great journey for us, particularly over the past eighteen months. Um, you know, we're just really sort of focusing now on um, you know, customer experience, time to yes, uh, and, also, um, and, and also really just uh, digitizing as much of um, our, our, our flow and our, experience, um, our sort of customer experience as possible, but, but still having it relevant for um, you know, customers that wanna you know, speak to a banker or um, be introduced to us via a broker as well. And so, yeah, I mean, we, we, um, you know, that's what we sort of get up uh, every single day thinking about, and um, you know, it's what, we, uh, it's what we love to do. Great, and that's a, a great seg into the first kind of theme we're going to tackle in the, some of the customer experience things. And in the panel earlier, three emerging fintechs obviously taking a bit of a snipe at the incumbents. Yeah. And you're obviously facing the challenge from a different end of the, uh, the spectrum. So from our perspective, the, the use cases and the applications of property are so profound. And so how do you look at that from an innovation perspective and how do you take some of those great ideas and practically execute on some of those things in a, a you know, more traditional, um, uh, from a tr traditional lender's perspective. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I sort of, I think um, one of the benefits to uh, in, um, legacy banks, I guess, that the fintechs provides is that they sort of raise the bar um, and, and show you what good looks like and they raise the bar in experience and, um, and that, that really helps to, to focus the mind. Um, for us in terms of, you know, how we sort of think about uh, property data, I mean, if you think about what a customer knows when they buy a house, they really know the, the address and the purchase price. Um, but we can do an incredible amount with that, right? I mean, we can do things around title, we can do things around contract, we can do things around collateral, uh, et cetera, loan to value, like a whole heap of things. Um, uh, you know, just those two bits of information allow us to do. Um, so we, we, we are investing, you know, obviously heavily um, in, in that and, and, and particularly around, uh, you know, AVMs, um, sorry, automated valuations. Um, you know, that, that's a big uh, focus uh, for us. Um, so that, that's sort of part A. And then I think part B is actually thinking around, well, you know, how do you, how do you actually start to use that um, in a bit of a competitive advantage way, right, that, that your scale brings you. And, um, and so, you know, we've really um, inbuilt, you know, if you think about your, your, you know, 10 years ago experience when you were trying to get a mortgage, um, you know, you'd have to sort of rock up to, to meet either a broker or a, or a, um, or a bank manager, um, you know, or, or, or a branch and, uh, you know, you'd have to have a whole bunch of paper and, and really what we've been, allowed, um, and then, then you get an answer maybe sort of two, three weeks later um, after someone in back office had, had, had looked at it. Um, what, we're, what we've been able to do with just with, you know, just with sort of simple um, uh, forms of data is really bring forward a whole bunch of um, things that you'd have your, your middle and back office doing and, uh, and sort of build them into the customer conversation and you can sort of call, you know, various data sources during that during that discussion or, you know, if a customer wants to do that with a broker, um, you know, we can provide that to them as well. So it's been, you know, that, that's sort of how we think about um, in terms of the customer experience. Um, we've also at NAP got a 
sort of strategy and innovation division who, who sort of really think about our third horizon and, um, and just actually like what, you know, what, what the future is going to look like. And, and so they try to, we try to marry the two up. So that, that's really how we bring it to bear in, in, in NAB. Oh, it's an incredible insight. I think um, Andrew from Nano earlier was talking about the fastest home loan on the planet at 10 minutes. Yeah. Do you feel that you're equipped to take those guys on or using some of that advantage of the data that you have? Yeah, so we've got, um, uh, we, we've got, it's, uh, sorry, whenever I hear sort of just the, 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 the pace in home loans, it's, um, <laughs> uh, it just reminds me of a movie. Um, but but we, we've got, um, we, we have a process at NAB or like an experience at NAB that we call our simple, simple home loans. And it's, you know, it's just something we've been uh, working on for the past 18 months. And, um, you know, it's, it's pretty uh, prevalent throughout our, throughout, our, um, you know, throughout our retail network. And now we're, we're just sort of launched to brokers and are testing our tech out there. And, um, and you know, for, for those retail customers, you know, um, you know, a good portion of those can get answers on the spot. Um, and, you know, we're getting over 60% of applications same day. And that, and that includes docs, not just decision. So that's been, that's been hugely um, important for us. And so the competition, what, we've, what we believe in is speed to yes. Um, and what we believe in, though, is actually... Uh, you know, we need to be able to scale that above just things like refi and you know, so certain pay, um, certain pay types and certain uh, you know customer types. Yeah, I mean, time to yes has come up thematically throughout every one of the panels and discussions to date. I mean, you've got to feel that that's going to be a race that someone's going to win at some point. I mean, D Derek, do you think that there's any other things that you can do in helping? somebody find a home or add different value to your proposition to yeah. move it away just from time or price? Yeah, look, I think time to yes and speed is really just ticket to the ball game. I don't think there is a sustainable competitive advantage in speed. I think speed's important for a customer. If they want it fast, you should give it as fast as they desire it. Um, but I also think speed at the consequence of understanding of the customer. Mortgages are complex. I think speed at the consequence of understanding is a bit risky for the customer and it's risky for us. So what we've tried to create, first of all, is like an immersive experience where if they want it real time and our platform does it real time, they can have it real time if it's a simple product and they think they've got the know-how to do that. But in some cases, like they, customers struggle with the jargon. They don't understand, you know, I'm thinking of refinance my property. I think I need to, you know, invest in something or I want to up update it in some way and, 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 and put some money towards it. And customers don't exactly always know what the right options for them are or how they should be thinking about their finance structure in line with that. So part of the value, I think, is one, offering them the tools, ideally real time, where you can serve up property data or you can serve up the insights around the risks that they might be taking so that they can make a full and frank decision. So I think providing really good information into the experience and partnering that up with a professional so that they can actually make the best choices for them is one of the differentiating factors that I think can offer an outstanding experience. I think secondly, um, more broadly than just digitizing mortgages, I think um, the game should be to create new products that people haven't seen before. I think home loans are pretty boring. I think they haven't changed in a very, very long time. And actually, they should change. I mean, if you look at the way the market works, you have an advertised price, and then you have a negotiated outcome, and the rates rise as soon as, you know, after you've got your cash back offer and all that good jazz, everything starts to rise and you get stuck in that loan. And it's very, very difficult to refinance, like we heard this morning. Like, the discharge process is a nightmare. So. We think um, with our company that we should be creating new products that create new value, that change the game a little bit around some of those concepts, which is why we started with the rate reducing loan, which is just a different way to think about gamifying natural human behavior to help them get the loan off their back sooner. So I think the answer to your question is differentiating on experience, but also differentiating on product and how you create value for customers. Yeah, uh, we've seen great success in some of our partners in helping customers find a home. It's an incredibly difficult environment out there at the moment, um, particularly in the broker space. Angus, is that something that you're thinking about in your experience? Yeah, look, it's a, it's a good question. Uh, it's a tricky one, right? Because the home buying is such an emotional experience for customers. So, yeah, where the, the broker and the bank play a role in helping them find the exact right home or, or helping them maybe understand whether they can afford the home they've chosen, um, understand a little bit more around the characteristics of that property and whether banks, what their view on credit will be, for example, um, whether you can make the finance experience quick so that they can actually go and bid at that home that they want. So I think there's a, absolutely a role we can play around the home, but uh, yeah, not necessarily like finding the home. I, I can't see us doing, doing that piece. But um, yeah, I mean, just picking up what Derek said, I, I think 
I think there has been a, a big focus on speed over the last couple of years, and that's where a lot of investment has happened. And I think it, it is important, like, and it's important for us because um, generally, if you're fast, it means you've got digitised customer experience and you've got an automated yeah. process behind the scenes, which means you've got a scalable proposition. So um, the, the outcome is not necessarily, I just want it to be a 10 minute home loan, but you want it to be as quick as a customer wants to go and then you want it to be scalable for the business and accurate so that you can have confidence in the process. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it is interesting to see what the next range of differentiation will be beyond faster and um, different product um, innovation as well. Yeah, it came through in one of the uh, panel sessions in the other room earlier around um, looking at products that have a sustainability bent. And we're getting asked a lot now about um, obviously the environmental impacts and the construct of properties that make them um, green and sustainable. Yeah. Maybe Angus, I don't know if you've got any thoughts around products or services that um, you might be considering or thinking about in that space, or is that even an angle that you'd want to be taking? Um, yeah, so look, maybe I'll answer the question directly. And then there's a sort of broader, broader sort of approach that that you know NAB takes. Um, so, so we, you know, we're we're always sort of on the lookout for ways in which we can you know have those value added services for customers. And um, you know, we've sort of had and we, we bank obviously NAB's a, um, a sort of business bank at heart. So we, we bank a lot of um, uh, you know sort of institutions that you know energy companies etc. So we you know we have conversations with them from time to time about around things we can do. Um, you know, particularly around sort of solar, battery, all those pieces, and um, and, and what we're sort of seeing from overseas, and this is um, you know this is just more 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 general for the funding markets for everyone, is that you do get you know particularly from in Europe and the US, you do get a lot of uh, kudos um, for for sort of having a green um, and sustainability approach, and you know NABs I mean, people can go look it up, right? NABs just um, announced a, a significant sort of um, uh, pathway. Uh, for, for the company around um, sort of our, our approach to, you know, the the, the 2050 um, target that um, you know that we're all uh, that we're all hoping uh, all countries um, meet. So, um, but then but then in terms of broader value add, you know, for us it's what what we're really proud of and what we're able to do is is, is to be able to look after segments of the market that you know that that might not qualify elsewhere. So, first home buyers is an example, right? You know, we've done a tremendous amount of work with NIFIC. Um, in this past year, and, and been really able to support, you know, thousands of first home buyers who, um, you know, who wouldn't, you know, be able to buy their first home uh, without without the support of a, a bank. And, um, you know, sort of thinking more about sort of affordable housing is a, is a big focus for us at the moment, and, and the likes of customers there, and, and and what that means. And so, yeah, it's just a bit of a broader approach, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, great. Derek, I know one of your key focuses is digitisation. You mentioned your full stack technology right in the opening statements. What, what things about, and a lot of people talk about valuations all the time, which seems to be a very specific pain point around property. Is there anything else that slows you down in the assessment of an appropriate property for a customer and for a security that you'd want to know about that place, location that will help make your decisions quicker? Well, I'll probably answer it in two ways. I think I do think there's a lot more we should do with data in the industry to make life easy. But I do think it's firstly about using the data you got, not worrying about what you don't got. And I think we have enough data now to really um, see customer data, property data, um, macroeconomic data, all that, all those variables in one place, and then to use that to create superior insights, whether it's directly giving it into the hands of customers or whether it's putting it in the power of your credit officer so that they can actually be served up the analysis they need to make a fast decision. So I think, um, particularly if you are smart around how you um, maybe check what's a fact versus what's data. So one of the things we've done, for example, is we reconcile everything. So if we get a source data piece in, we reconcile against an independent source. And until it's um, uh, reconciled, it's not attested as being true. And if it's not attested as being true, then you treat it very differently from something that isn't being attested as being true. And I think there's a lot of power you can you, there, that is available to us right now with the market data. However, if you look forward horizon, um, I, I personally think we don't, like we're getting very good now at identity, having a bureau for identity and understanding people's identity, but I don't think we have a bureau really for property data yet. I know we have titles in PEXA, but we don't really have that one digital file that tells us what is the history on that property, what are all the things that are connected with that property that we w might want to understand and see. And you know, our, we buy these cars which are very expensive, we have our log books and we know more about a car 
um, but we spend 10 times the amount on a house and we know very, very little about it really, I think, from a digital aspect. And I think if we had that, I think the time to yes, and I think you'd see a lot more differentiation in the market as well around pricing and collateral management and different things that people might do um, if we had that asset. So that's where I'd love to see the industry go. Yeah, look, clearly that's top of our mind as an organisation that looks after property data is how do we get that richer and more available and in the hands of the right people. But um, kind of leads into one of the other topics that we're talking about. I, I think the consumer data right and open banking is very regulated, prescribed in the way those data events, fields are going to be shared and used. Property is not like that whatsoever. It's kind of, you can get data from lots of places and use it in lots of different ways and the use cases are profound. Um, we're looking at technology now whereby you can do incredible feature extraction and AI from images. Where do you think the balance of collecting that data and driving a customer experience sits in terms of a privacy and data usage perspective? I think if you take a step back, you've got your Googles who you know, consume all your data and they give it away for free. You get services from them for free. And then on the other side, you've got Apple who are grabbing a huge amount of data but be putting behind some hardware and software and putting it behind their firewall and saying that they're keeping your data safe. I think um, for me in financial services, I think you have to play more to the right than the left on that topic. I think you, and I think you can do both. I think when it comes to data, I think um, customers really want you to do three things. They want you to be transparent about what you're doing. They want you to treat their data with respect and they want you to use it for the purpose intended. And I think um, as long as you do that and you're really upfront with customers as to what you're doing, I think you can actually use the wide gamut of data available around that customer to help them get a better decision or a faster decision, so long as you kind of follow those three guiding principles. So I think you can do both, but I certainly think the days of, you know, we'll grab everything about you, we'll use it for one purpose, we'll then use it for another later, we'll not be fully transparent with you about that. I think those days are gone for many industries, and I, don't, I think in financial services more so. Yeah, so transparency and yeah. opting in for a better experience, yeah. basically, and, but making everyone understand of how that works for in either contribution or using. Great, that's thing. So as you said, the, that digital property record, again, the use cases are quite profound in terms of finding customers, marketing or retaining customers, Angus. Have you got an experience of how you're using any of that data beyond loan origination? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, as I mentioned in my intro, we, we have invested a lot in the in the sort of awareness stage of the property journey. So helping customers to, um, particularly when they start thinking about their, their lending and how much they can borrow, we our form helps to breadcrumb them through the experience. And we, you know, some of the key feedback we've got around as we were designing it is people felt they were giving a lot of information to a bank or to a broker when they're going through the experience. They're not getting anything back. Um, and so we try and make the whole proposition as two-way as possible. So when a customer starts putting in some details around you know, how much they want to borrow, or if they've got a current lender, we'll tell them how much they could save, what some of the um, other products are available they could get in market, what their repayments would be. Um, it's sort of every stage of, like, they answer three questions, they get something back. And, yeah, I think that just helps to make it a much more interactive experience. And, and um, we're finding that that, yeah, helps draw people through the, through the process a lot better using, using that data. And then similarly with the, with the app, giving people sort of relevant, timely and accurate insights on how they can save money, particularly on their home loan, but on their, on their other banking. There's just so much availability of data that you could, could use these days. And, and we've, we've focused very much on the, on the banking data, so the costs of your banking, your interest and your fees, all the different products that are in market, sort of RBA data about different industry benchmarks. But yeah, a lot of people have said, why don't you do insights around you know, budgeting and all these other things we could do with the data. But I guess to your point around privacy and, and where's the line, we, you know, our proposition is all around your home loan and paying off your home loan faster. And that's the reason why customers are sharing their data with us. So we, we try and st stay very focused on, on that mission. Yeah, I think um, in t uh, the earlier session as well, I think it was Nathan was talking about dynamically repricing back books and analytics used in retention services as well. Is that something that you guys are thinking about as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's uh, as people pay down their home loan, the, the, the banks do hold less capital against their home loans. So, so sorry, Gus, but it is, uh, <laughs> that is where the industry is going, yeah, that, 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 that uh, home loans should be cheaper over time as you, as you pay your LVR down. And... And what we've seen, we're seeing in the industry at the moment that we've got two 
radically different pricing strategy. So we've got people who are being hyper transparent around this is the rate you'll get, um, this is what will happen when you pay down and you won't pay any fees, versus you've got incumbents that are trying to hang on to some of their profit that they've got from their back book and, and they're developing very sophisticated um, propensity models around uh, likely to accept the price and how likely are you to a trite. And I, like I've been in both chairs, so I know, I know what it's like. Uh, but I, I think the the movement for more transparency and fairer pricing is getting louder and louder every day. And, and we've seen it across other industries. You know, remember your, your phone bill when you used to get access to data usages and you know you thought you were on a $30 plan, you end up spending 200 and that moved to it's just a $50 plan and you pay 50 no matter what you do. I don't think we're quite there with, with, with home loans, but I think we're all, we are definitely on the way. And uh, yeah, other industries, I think you're seeing transparent pricing, you buy an Apple phone, you buy a Tesla, you, you kind of know what you're going to pay. Um, banking has probably got a little way to go still. Um, you know, one of the stats I find interesting, you mentioned the loyalty tax before and existing customers paying more than new customers. And there was a big review in that in 2019. Josh Frydenberg launched it with the ACCC. And that was when the front back book price was 38 basis points differential. And then last month it was 39. So it's like, it's, it's still there. So it gives a huge opportunity to digital brokers and innovators. Um, and it gives a big headache to the existing banks when they think about how to hit their next half's results. Yeah, so on that, Gus, how are you thinking about that? Um, Gus, G mentioned some of these sophisticated models. Is that something you're oh, look, I gotta thinking be, about and I, you're across? I've got to be careful uh, talking about pricing in a public forum, right? Um, look, what, what, I, what I will say is... Maybe think about it in the retention space. So if uh, people are um, coming after you with technology and ways to switch customers quicker. How you yeah, what I, what, I, what I will say um, is, you know, like we, we, we are, you know, obviously actively um, thinking around, you know, LVR based pricing, right? And, and, um, and all banks are, and, and, that's, um, uh, and, and that's sort of something that, that we're sort of working through and getting our heads around. Um, you know, we do like to, like to sort of make sure our customers are happy and we invest a lot in their, um, the experience for them as well. And, and I guess one of the one of the benefits that a bank has, which is which is different to say like a non-bank lender, is obviously you know you've got the broader options right around around sort of banking services and um, and uh, you know so like that's that, that's something that we focus on is like the whole of customer relationships. So it's not, not just about innovation on the home loan; it's actually the broader um, you know everyday banking experience, right? Which is um, you know to, I think Derek made the point before: home loans are boring. Um, you probably only think about them you know once a month when you, when your pay goes out. Um, whereas, like you know, everyday banking is something you use every single day, and so um, yeah, so like that—that's how we sort of think about the, the you know, it's, it's more like the broader overarching customer experience as opposed to just a product, a, a product-based lens. It's a very general answer to a specific question, but I got to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay, um, Derek. I think uh, taking your point on that digital property record, if that was a thing, and it, it definitely isn't in Australia yet, um, but um, similar to a conversation earlier, the way we think about it is packaging that up in nice ways where we can inform the right professionals to make better decisions about things. So let's say valuers or brokers or even underwriters, is that something that you're seeing in your organization as well? Yeah, so look, what we've done with our business, because we have one stack, one single system, we've paralyzed every single lending banking process. So whether it's KYC, credit, property assessment, uh, and mostly those services run real time for us. However, there's you know, particularly when you get out of simple loans, when you get into moderate and complex loans, there are decisions where the data isn't perfect to make a call. And you do need someone to look at it because maybe there's 10% of gambling expenditure in somebody's account. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a bad thing. You know, the data isn't clear. It's, it may be subjective in nature, the assessment you need to make. So what we do is we've actually um, essentially built a repository of data across economics, local area, property, customer, character, whatever. And we basically serve up to our internal customer, which is our staff, um, a single view of what they need to understand, where we serve up the analysis and the information they need so that they can make a fast decision. And um, that means we get the best of both worlds because we can paralyze people as well as we can paralyze pro uh, system processes um, by making it super fast for them to make the call when the data isn't there to do it automatically. So we're actually building out a, um, 
basically just a massive repository of data that we can serve up to different types of users in different contexts where we bring together the best of, if it's in a, an assessment world, property, credit, collateral. And, but we have different use cases where we will reuse that data for different instances. We might actually present it into our virtual call to a customer. We might use it in a different use case, even for finance or for um, some of our operations teams. So for us, I think it's about just trying to use the data you've got, but by trying to create insights that allow your, your staff member essentially to move as fast as they possibly can and serve it up to them on a platter. Yeah, I think Gus B, you've got a large operations teams underwriting and valuing. Is that a similar experience in your organization as well? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're, I mean they're, they're getting smaller over time, right, as you, as you, as you use a lot more automation. I think um, the big, yeah, the big focus for us is actually how you just turn docs into data. I mean, sort of in a in a general sense, and um, you know, and just the benefit you get from things like you know AVMs, as I said, and being able to sort of have that upfront at the start of the conversation means you don't need to have someone check it, you know, more often than not. So that's that that's hugely important for us. And then obviously there's things around title, and um, uh, as Derek was mentioning earlier, that I think is 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 hugely important. Um, so yeah, I mean that that's a big focus for us is really around that sort of turning that sort of docs into data and, and just sort of how you, how you can accommodate and ingest you know new data flows that are relevant um, to the to the to the customer and to the and, and to what they're seeking to do yeah you mentioned AVMs there I think Derek and I were talking at lunchtime uh, the case study recently where Zillow who arguably have one of the best valuation models on the planet apart from CoreLogix of course yeah um, <laughs> just took a huge bath on using that data to buy properties we're often in the middle of a um, healthy tension between yeah. distribution teams and credit teams on how do you use that data appropriately? Do you make deals with it or do you minimize losses with it? And yeah. how do you deal with that tension? For me, I mean, most importantly, what we care about is a customer can repay, right? Um, is, is primarily the, the, the goal and um, making sure you, that a customer's in a loan that they can afford and repay and um, meets everything that we have to, you know, to do. Um, I, I think you know, there's always a healthy tension there. Um, what, what we sort of tend to focus on is actually, um, you know, we, we really like deals that are sort of in that 80% and under um, market as all, as all banks do. Um, for specific customer types, we'll go above and specific um, you know, clients, for example, particularly when, you know, like in, in, when you get into sort of like business banking um, uh, and the types of clients you have there, you can have, um, you know, sort of uh, a lot of sort of high net worth clients who have, you know, got a lot of assets, but, but you know, for various reasons don't, don't have, have a heap of income. And so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll tend to support them. For the valuation, we don't really have a, you know, we, we don't really take an approach where we'll seek to, you know, sort of really ramp up the, um, or risk on on the vow because people have learned over time, uh, that can really come back and bite you um, if you get that wrong. And so we just, we, we, we sort of focus more on precision versus, um, uh, you know, and, and for specific client types, being able to you know, make, make sure we can support them um, where they need. Yeah, uh, maybe you'd be Gus G following on from that. Do you um, think about the way that you're placing deals or um, you know, assessing automatically using those valuation tools in different ways? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It, it, I mean, it's an interesting one, the, the credit versus the sales team vow, and like, it should be the same vow, right? Like, <laughs> it is the same vow, isn't it? You don't get exactly right. two different ones. But, uh, but it's, yeah, it's sort of your optimism bias versus your, well, there's no credit risk people here, but your pessimism bias that you're kind of looking through that different lens uh, at that part of the, of the journey. But honestly, the, the holy grail would be to be able to get vows up up the start of the journey that are, that are up to date, accurate, have insight into what lenders would look at in terms of credit policy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, square meterage, maybe strata title, type of dwelling, all those things that can be knockouts for, for certain banks. But then for that, if there was a way for that data to pass through the experience. So rather than every participant getting their own valuation and, and different supplier or different way of asking for it, you end up with different numbers. If there was a way to yeah, almost like a CDR data type thing, but mm. for property valuation to be able to take that through, I think that would be a, a bit of a game changer just to give everyone in the, in the market a lot more confidence because that's what it really is about, is confident that, okay, I can borrow enough and that is going to be an acceptable security and it is going to be approved by the bank. Yeah, I tend to agree. Obviously, we see a lot of arbitrage in that being a provider to many different lenders. And I think Dave from um, Lendy mentioned exactly the same thing before. It's certainty, understanding every provider's policy up front. Yeah, get yeah, that decision quickly and consistently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, yeah, the, the and speed will help that as banks get faster and faster. Like that will absolutely help. But there's 
yeah, there's no doubt uh, experts get put in a position where they, someone wants to go and buy a home the next day and the customer's saying, can, can I afford this? So mate, I want to leave some time for questions, maybe a couple of big ones. I mean, can the process be completely digitised from start to finish? Yes. It can. Well, I mean, for, there's certain types of complex deals. You, 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 know, you probably want someone to look at, for example, if you're buying for, through a company, you want someone to look at your financial statements. And, but yeah, no, definitely it can. Derek. Yeah, I'd say um, absolutely. I think um, it might be a bit controversial here, but I think the technology to do this was existed 10 years ago. I don't think um, the technology is available today has dramatically improved the ability to automate anything. I think it's made it maybe easier and faster and cheaper to do. I think the automation of home loans is not a technology problem, really. I think it's actually a business design problem where until you rewrite how you think about underwriting and compliance and some of the things that happen back of house, you can't really streamline the process for the customer. And I think to achieve it, I think we've been very fortunate because we've had a blank canvas to look through the layer cake of customer and product and operations and compliance and underwriting and risk and to be able to just rewrite those business processes from scratch and design them in a way where they're fast to change. And I think that's the secret. I think if you can take a green canvas view or a blank canvas view to design of your business and then build a platform and a company that's fast to change, I think that's where the future of, of continuous evolution will be for this stuff. But I actually don't think it's a technology problem. I think it's a business design problem. Angus, from your perspective. Angus G. Angus G. Yeah. Uh, so people in your business in 10 years' time. Hopefully it doesn't take 10. <laughs> but, uh, so I, I absolutely can be. Uh, the, so the question we're grappling with is because it can be, should it be? Mm. I think so. Uh, like there are some really powerful conversations you have with customers at different stages of that home loan experience that it's hard to see an experience where you're not having that at all. Um, but you know things change. <laughs> so so um, you know people are buying things, big items without actually test driving a car these days. So so customers will change and preferences will change, and so we're building a platform that will be agnostic to. Um, whether the customer wants to speak to someone or not. So they will be able to go right through the, um, from sort of fact find through the application through the drawdown without speaking to anyone, but they'll be, have the ability to speak to anyone at, at any point mm. as well. So you're, mm. we're aiming to have the best of both worlds. And, uh, but I, I suspect for the first year, we'll be certainly saying, no, at this stage, you do speak to someone just to make sure we've got the right um, requirements and objectives, the right products that suit yeah. you because you can absolutely robot advice at all, um, but uh, I'm not, not sure if yeah, everyone's ready for that just ready yet. For that. Yeah. Like, just uh, just yeah. on that, just sorry, just one more. I think on that point, um, Angus Max is really relevant where, you know, like more often than not, we see, you know, we, we, we see a mature amount of customers and um, I kind of have to keep reminding myself that not everyone sort of obsesses over financial services like, <laughs> like we do in a yeah. bank, right? So a lot of people that, you know, this is a really foreign experience um, for them, so they want you know they want someone to talk to, be it a, a banker or a broker, um, and and that will be around for a while. You know, and you need to provide a, a good journey for them. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, and I think um, it, it makes us excited as an organisation. Some of the possibilities of what can happen with that digital property record, or how you can change that experience, or power the human beings to have that emotional conversation around should you buy a home and is it the right one and is it all, all good for you is uh, can go in so many different directions that we're just thrilled to be at the middle of it. Well, thanks so much guys. I think we've got a time for a few questions from the floor if, uh, if anyone's got one out there. We do have a roving mic if uh, anyone wants to ask a question from the panel. Hi, it's uh, Sasha Canopler from ASX, but probably more on a, a personal question. The, what's the customer experience going to look like uh, when the inflation story takes hold and interest rates double, uh, obviously some have probably gone through it with a, the COVID experience, but it might be new for, for other organisations. So how does that digitised process work with the customer experience when things go wrong? Yeah, so I think there's, uh, there's two, two elements, right? There's, so there's the experience of getting the right home loans and, and you have to have confidence that your digital process is still going through all the steps that you need to as if a human was doing that face to face. So we're seeing sort of a robo advice in sort of financial planning and things like that, where particularly I think they've started where it's more simplified customer scenarios, but it, it does tend to leave a better 
and more compliant experience because you've you know the questions have been asked, you know the risks have been raised, and you you have the audit trail of that process happening. But you, of course, you have to have some checks and balances around it. You need to say, well, okay, how long did it take the customer to go through that part of the form? Did they just click, 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 and mm. you know, it, have, has this really been understood? So that's why I think the in the near to medium term, there still will need to be that human interaction, and and then I think the the flip side of that is the post-origination part of the journey. So, yeah, making sure you've got a really open communication platform with your customers so that when things change, because we know things change all the time, we've spent a lot of time today talking about when their LVR goes down and what should happen then, but that's like one scenario and you know, something else could happen in their life, in their job, their family. So I think it is making sure you've got a, an ongoing relationship with the customer that's mm. not just about the sales event. For us, um, I'll probably take a step back before I answer your question directly. We, we took a bit of a different lens on risk and compliance when we built the company. So what we did is we turned the entire regulatory, like we're doing it right now, but we're halfway through turning the entire regulatory set of objectives and obligations into, into code. So we basically have a, a real-time system for checking that we have done what we've meant to have done on needs and objectives and all that good stuff at the start, when we're discovering products with customers and what we're doing when we're working with customers day to day. And that kind of sets the foundation layer for us because um, what we would like to do as we get into that new cycle when interest rates do go up is to use that real-time control system to do proactive things with customers such as can we identify early on that they may be experiencing stress and then can that actually encourage different kind of hardship behaviour that we could do with those customers. So um, I think in a digital world, hardship cases or cases where customers are coming under household stress, and I think um, you have an obligation now to think very carefully about the valuation topic we talked about earlier, because I think people are, you know, we don't know if they're coming in at the top of the market, but the market is, is definitely being elevated. And I think it's fair to say that people are having to borrow more than they would like. And I think wages are, we're looking in one sense, and some industries are going quite well, but other industries are kind of flatlining or declining. And I think um, we potentially in the next cycle could face some stress on households in, in pockets or worse if we had any global or macroeconomic shocks. And so I think it's incumbent upon the people who are originating today to think about the health of the customer now and in that stress scenario. So like everybody else, we have a very robust um, serviceability um, assessment on customers where we're not just looking at today but we're looking into tomorrow and we're putting on the right buffers and different things to make sure they can withstand some kind of a household shock mm. and we do that real time when we check that back and we'd actually like to start presenting some of that back to the customer if we think it would be valuable to some and um, then looking for those proactive triggers on hardship or stress households down the track. Yeah and look the only thing I would sort of add is you know like as a bank like you're you know we're obviously a regulated entity um you know as public APRA recently has increased what we call the serviceability buffer to three percent so you know we assess on far higher than what a rate might be today um so that's a big uh that's a big focus for us i think we've got another one over there hi there uh ian kelsall from thoughtworks so we, the last topic was just on embedded banking and i'm like it's quite interesting today to seeing the number of like new lender brands that have sprung up as well as like existing um, like the incumbent banking brands. Do you think does the panel think actually the best place for um, like being the custodian of buying a home sits with a bank or a lender, or would it be better served embedded as an experience that might be more natural to a customer to engage with? Because um, it still feels like the pull to engaging with a financial product, which is not necessarily something that a customer is naturally doing as the sort of the start of their journey. Um, and I think a, a lot of effort is often spent sort of trying to pull customers or establishing a new brand when perhaps there's some more natural brands that where a customer might more, more naturally engage. Um, look, I'll kick off there. My view is that it's a bit of both, actually. I think customers should be able to access the products and solutions they need in the channel of their choice or in the place of their choice. So I think there's, um, you don't necessarily need to bring someone to your website or to your business to, um, you can actually embed your product elsewhere. I think right now in the customer mindshare, I actually think um, people really want to trust the organization they're working with when they put their money someplace or when they take their money from someplace. And I think there's a big trust factor that comes from being a financial brand. And I don't necessarily think any brand can just offer a mortgage and, and embed that into some other ecosystem. I think you'll find some brands will attempt that, but can they differentiate on speed or on value prop? Who knows? 
Um, I think the magic from differentiation home loans comes from going across the customer needs and their problems and how you bring an innovative product to market. And to drive that innovative product, you have to be innovating across funding, risk, compliance, and ops, right? Yeah. So I think personally, you'll see it as being a both where um, you'll see embedded products in other ecosystems, but it'll be brands coming together. I'm not convinced um, you know, pure white labeling of mortgages or any of that will work. Yes, it could, but um, I think you'll probably see a bit of both. Some people attempt the white labeling, but will they be able to differentiate versus others who will probably embed their products into other ecosystems? Yeah, and you see, I mean, payments is the classic example, right? I mean, you see, like, I mean, yeah, well, like, like their model uh, is primarily built on the embedded, um, the embedding of financial services into a customer's ecosystem, and um, you know, and that's really prevalent around the world. I think the jury's out for you know for for a, as I say, but for a um, punter and a, or a customer and 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 their 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 housing loan, right? Which is you know probably one of the bigger decisions they're going to make. It's um, uh, it, it's 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 not yet clear as to whether that can be embedded um, in different experiences without some form of of at least today you know uh, a human. A human interaction. Um, over time, though, who knows? Like you know, I mean, white labeling is pre- prevalent um, today. You often see, you know, you see this with a lot of aggregators in the market, um, and that and that's really starting to um, to move. Uh, so you know, I, I think there is a lot of growth in that market um, that, that that we see. Um, but whether whether that gets to a point where you know you're in, sorry to use an extreme example, but like you know you're in you're in Starbucks and you can take out a home like I, who knows. <laughs> I think it's an interesting question, and I think it's probably maybe for lower involvement products, the service ends up in the place where the customer is doing their business. So the payments example is probably one where, yeah. where it's made, well, of course that's convenient. I just want to make the payment now, but I think to the point points you guys have made, like the home loan kind of, it's a big enough decision that you want to do your own research and you want to kind of think about who you're getting the product from, what choices you're making, and what the process is. I did work on a on a partnership with a big real estate portal in my last role when I was at a bank. And, and that was that very example was how do you connect the home buying experience with the home financing experience and make it one? Yeah, it's a, it's a good challenge, but there's a, a fair bit to work through on how you do mm. truly connect that. And is that truly what customers want as well? That's great. I think, Gus B, you've got a... a yeah, I've got a, a dash flight. to the airport, An old school flight. Uh, that's right, yep. Uh, if everyone could just join me and put their hands together for a great panel. Thanks very much. For-